quadratic equations. A quadratic equation is an equation written in a general form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a does not equal zero. The reason why a cannot equal zero is because that would get rid of that x squared term, and we have to have the x squared term in order for it to be a quadratic equation. If that x squared term was not in the equation, then all we would have is the bx plus c, and that would be a linear term. So a quadratic equation is an equation that has the x squared term as its highest power, so we can't have a higher power. We can't have an x to the third or an x to the fourth. Um, it has to have x squared as its highest power, and that has to be in the equation in order for it to be considered a quadratic equation. The zero product principle states that if, two pro if the product of two algebraic expressions is zero, then at least one of the factors is equal to zero. So if we have factors, if we have broken down our uh, equation into factors, then we can take each factor and set it equal to zero to solve the equation. Now, we're going to be dealing with quadratic equations throughout this lesson. There are several different methods that can be used to solve quadratic equations, and the first one that we're going to talk about is solving by factoring. The steps to solving a quadratic equation by factoring is, the first step is basically to just move all of the terms to one side of the equation and set it equal to zero. The next step is to factor completely then we apply that zero product principle that we just talked about by setting each factor equal to zero. Then we solve each of the equations and we check the solutions in our original equation. Now, the reason why, um, whenever we're solving, a let me just tell you about what a quadratic equation looks like. Um, if we have, say our x, or our, that's our y and our x axis, If we were dealing with a linear equation, an equation that's not quadratic, then when we graph it, it would look like this. It would be a line, and it would cross the x-axis in one spot. So, like, here's where it's crossing the x-axis, and that would be the solution to that linear equation. When we're dealing with quadratic equations, the graph of a quadratic equation is a parabola. So, a parabola looks like a u or an upside-down u. So, in our quadratic equation, most of the time we have two solutions because it crosses the x-axis in two spots. Now, it's possible that it only crosses it in one spot if the vertex sits on the axis, the x-axis, then it's only crossing it in one spot. Or it could be below or above and not cross the x-axis and it would have no solutions or actually imaginary solutions. But most of the time we have two solutions whenever we are um, dealing with quadratic equations. Okay, so let's solve this quadratic equation by factoring. So we said that the first step in factoring is to get everything on one side of the equation equal to zero. Well, that's already done in this case. So now we want to factor. Well, anytime we're factoring, we always want to first look to see if there is a greatest common factor between the terms. So if we look at these two terms, they do have greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is 3x. So if I factor out a 3x, I'm going to be left with x minus 3. Now remember, anytime you factor, you can check to make sure you factored it correctly by multiplying it back together because our factors should be able to multiply back together to give us what we started with. If it doesn't, then you didn't factor it correctly. Well, let's check this. 3x times x gives me 3x squared. 3x times negative 3 gives me a negative 9x. So I know that I factored it correctly because I can multiply it back together and get what I started with. So now that it's completely factored, I take each factor and set it equal to 0. By using, and, and I can do that because of that zero product principle. All right, so I'm going to take 3x, set it equal to zero, x minus 3 equals zero. And then I solve each one of those. 
To solve the first one, I'm going to divide by 3. And 0 divided by anything is 0. To solve the second one, I need to add 3 to both sides. And that gives me x equals 3. Now, I can check these. You can always check your solutions by one at a time plugging them into the original equation. So if I wanted to check 0 for my solution, I would take 0 and plug it into both um, x's. Three, well, 0 squared would be 0, and 3 times 0 is 0. 9, or negative 9 times 0 is 0. And 0 minus 0 is 0. So this works. That's one of my solutions. And then if I were going to try the 3, if I plugged 3 in to both x's, follow order of operations, we're going to uh, do the exponent first. So 3 squared is 9. And nine time, 3 times 9 is 27. And negative 9 times 3 is negative 27. And 27 minus 27 is 0. So these are my two solutions for my quadratic equation. All right, here is another quadratic equation. The first step, remember, is to set uh, or to get everything on one side equal to zero. So I'm going to move the one over first to get everything on one side. So that gives me 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals zero. Okay, so now I'm going to factor. Is there a greatest common factor in all three terms? No, there's not. So this is a trinomial, and we know that all trinomials factor into two binomials. And remember, this is kind of like backwards from foiling. Whatever goes in the first two spots need to multiply together to give me this term. So what can I multiply together to get 2x squared? It would be 2x and x. Okay, the thing that goes in the last two spots need to multiply together to give me 1. Well, the only thing that I can multiply to get 1 is 1 and 1. Okay, then we look at this sign, and that tells me if the signs in my two binomials are the same or different. If that second sign is plus, that means the two signs are the same. If the second sign is minus, that means the two signs are different. And then this tells me the sign of the bigger product. Okay, so by product, I mean when we multiply these together, I get a 1x. When I multiply these together, I get a 2x. So this needs to be positive because of this, because that, that first sign tells me the sign of the bigger product, and then this needs to be negative. Well, i got to back up. In order for the 2x to be positive, this also needs to be positive, because that would be positive 2x, and positive 1 gives me a positive 2x. And then this needs to be negative. Negative 1 times x gives me the negative 1x. Okay, so now I know that I have it all in the right order. My factors are correct. So once I have factored completely, I'm going to take each factor and set it equal to 0. All right, so 2x minus 1 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0. All right, I'm going to solve this by adding 1. That's 2x equals 1, and then divide by 2. So x equals 1 half. In my other factor, I'm going to subtract 1, so x equals negative 1. All right, so these are my two solutions, 1 half and negative 1. Another method that we can use to solve quadratic equations is the square root property. The square root property says that if u is an algebraic expression and d is a non-zero real number, then u squared equals d has exactly two solutions. Um, the reason for that is, this is saying if we take something and we square it, um, then that can actually be two different terms. For example, if I had 2 squared, 2 squared would be 2 times 2, and that would be 4. But if I had negative 2 squared, negative 2 
times negative 2 is also 4. So that means we can have two solutions. So we're going to solve this uh, quadratic equation by using the square root property. Now, when we were solving by factoring, we needed to get everything on one side equal to zero. And let me just stop for one second and just say, if you have trouble factoring, um, that, is, that is a skill that is learned in Math 99. So it's not, the, the factoring skill is not taught in 102. So if you're not sure how to do that, um, then you'll need to go back and watch my 99 videos on factoring. Okay, so now we're moving into the square root property, which will include a lot of radicals. If you're not sure how to deal with radicals, that's also a skill that's learned in 99, and you can watch my 99 videos on YouTube um, to refresh your skills on how to reduce radicals. Okay, so um, in factoring, we needed to get everything on one side equal to zero. Well, the first step in the square root method is we need to get whatever is being squared by itself on one side of the equation. So if we look at this quadratic equation, what is being squared? If you said 3x, that's not right. If it looked like this, then the 3x would be squared. But we don't see any parentheses, so the only thing that's being squared is the x. So we need to get everything else over to the other side of the equation. So first I'm going to add 21. And then I need to divide by 3 because i got to get that x squared by itself before we do the square root method. Okay, so now that it's by itself, we can take the square root of both sides. Okay, and when we take the square root of both sides, because of the fact that we're dealing with a square, we need to put plus or minus in front. Okay, because we're going to have a positive and a negative root. Um, okay, so square and square root cancel each other out, so we get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. Now, of course, if the number under the radical is a perfect square, or if it had any perfect square factors, we would need to simplify our radical. But 7 is not a perfect square, and it doesn't have any perfect square factors, so we can stop here, and these are our two solutions. All right, here's another one that we're going to do using the square root property. Remember, the first step is to get whatever's being squared by itself, and in B, the thing that's being squared is x. So I'm going to subtract 45 from both sides. And that gives me 5x squared equals negative 45. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So I get x squared equals, that's a negative 9. Okay, so now I'm going to take the square root plus or minus. So the square and the square root cancel out, and I get x is equal to plus or minus. Now remember, the negative comes out of the radical as what? As an i. And the square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of negative 9 would be 3i. And that's my two solutions. And when you see a solution that has an i on it, an imaginary solution, that just means that it doesn't cross the x-axis, and that's why it's got imaginary solutions. Okay, and C, what is being squared? Here, the x plus 5, that whole thing is being squared, and it's already by itself on one side of the equation, so we can go on to the next step, which is to take the square root of both sides. All right, so take the square root and then plus or minus the square root of 11, so that gives me x plus 5, because the square and square root cancel each other out, equals plus or minus the square root of 11. Okay, 11 is not a perfect square, and it doesn't have any perfect square factors, so we can't simplify that radical. But we're not done. We need to get the x by itself. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And I get x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 11, and I'm done.
Now, I just want to show you what would happen. Say if this were a perfect square. Say if it were 16. Um, so that means this step right here would look like this. X plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 16. All right, so we would get x plus 5 is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 16 is 4. So now I'm going to get the x by itself by subtracting 5. Well, I'm not just subtracting 5 from 4, or and I'm not adding 5 to 4. I'm going to have two different answers because that is a positive 4 and a negative 4. So what I'm doing is I'm subtracting 5 from positive 4. So I'm going to take the positive 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. All right, that's one of my solutions. But because of this, I have a positive 4 and a negative 4. So I've got to work it out again. I'm going to do x is equal to negative 4 minus 5. Well, negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. So I get these two different solutions. Don't say your answer is plus or minus 1. Don't say your answer is plus or minus 9. You have to work it out, and, and that plus or minus is in front of the number 4. It's not in front of the 5. And make sure that you work it out two separate times with a positive 4 and a negative 4, or whatever the, the number may be. So when we're solving quadratic equations... It, we can't always, um, equations are not always factorable, and we can't always use the square root method. One method that we can always use is the quadratic equation. All right, so the quadratic formula um, is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if you don't know that formula, um, an easy way to learn the formula is by learning a song to go with it. If you Google quadratic formula song, um, there's lots of different songs that you can learn to help you memorize this formula. But to use this formula, the first thing we need to do is get our equation in general form, or you can call it standard form. That's what I usually call it standard form. So this is the form. So it's in descending order according to the exponents. Our x squared term is first, then our x term, and then our constant. And the reason we do that is so we can pull out those coefficients to plug into the quadratic formula. So let's see how we use this equation. All right, so if we're going to solve by using the quadratic formula, first we need to make sure that our equation is in standard form, which it is, and then we're going to pull out our coefficients. So a is the coefficient of x squared, which would be 2. b is the coefficient of x, which is also 2. And c is whatever our constant is. In this case, it's negative 1. All right, so let me rewrite the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a, C, all over 2, A. Okay, so now I'm just going to take A, B, and C and plug it into the quadratic formula. So I have negative B, so that's negative. My B is 2. Plus or minus the square root of B squared, so that would be 2 squared, minus 4 times A, which is 2, times C, which is negative 1, all over 2 times a, which is 2. Now, to simplify this, we need to follow order of operations. And order of operations says that we need to do whatever is in parentheses first. But that doesn't mean just parentheses. That means whatever groups numbers together. So it could be a group of numbers in parentheses. It could be a group of numbers in absolute value. Or it could be a group of numbers that's under a radical. Well, in this case... This under this radical, this group of numbers under the radical, that needs to be done first. Within that, we have a couple of different things going on. We have an exponent, 
Here we have subtraction, so addition and subtraction we know goes last. And then these parentheses means that those terms are being multiplied. So before we add or subtract, we need to raise whatever that number is, that b, to the power, and then all of this needs to get multiplied together. So that negative in front of the 4, that just makes that a negative 4. We're going to multiply all that together, and then we'll put those two terms together. All right, so let's do that. So if I, um, let's see, x equals negative 2. If I raise 2 to the second power, I get 4. And then negative 4 times 2 times negative 1, that would be a positive 8. And then that's over. We can go ahead and multiply the 2 times 2, which is 4. All right, so I have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 4. Okay, I'm going to pause here for just a second. Um, you just need to know that this, once we simplify the, num the terms under the radical, once we simplify that and we get it down to a single number, that number is called the discriminant. Well, the discriminant can tell us some things about our solutions. If we have a positive discriminant like we have here, that tells us that we're going to have two real solutions. If our discriminant is zero, then we'll have zero, we'll have one, sorry, if our discriminant is zero, we'll have one real solution. If our discriminant is a negative number, then we're going to have two imaginary solutions. All right, so because we have a positive discriminant, we know that we should have two real solutions. So let's come solving this equation. Now, 12 is not a perfect square, but it has um, perfect, a perfect square factor. 12 is the same thing as 4 times 3. Okay, so that gives me negative 2 plus or minus. Now, 4 comes out as a 2, and the 3 stays under. And that's over 4. Now, when we're reducing uh, radicals, I mean, sorry, rational, a rational expression where we have a fraction, um, as long as our denominator can be divided into, if we have something separated by plus or minus, as long as the denominator can go into both of the terms, then we can reduce it. If, say, um, say if this were a, a 3, well, 4 can't divide into 3, so we wouldn't be able to reduce it at all. But since all of these, um, these are even numbers, these whole numbers, we don't worry about this under the radical. If all, of our, if all of our whole numbers can be reduced by the same number, then we can reduce it. So all of these can be divided by 2. So that's what we're going to do. So if I divide all of those whole numbers by 2, I get negative 1 plus or minus. That would be 1 squared to 3, but we don't write the 1, so it's just squared to 3 over. Then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this is my, or these are my solutions. Okay, let's look at another example. Again, um, the first step in solving a quadratic equation uh, by using the quadratic formula is to get it in standard form. So this equation is already in standard form. And now I'm going to pull out A, B, and C. So a, in this case, the coefficient of x squared, we don't see 1, so we know it's understood to be 1. Then for b, the coefficient of x is negative 2. Oh, hold on. And c is 2. Okay, so let's plug this into the quadratic formula. x equals negative b. Now my b is negative 2, so it's negative, negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now anytime your b is negative, you got to be careful with the signs. Make sure that you plug it in in parentheses. So that's negative 2 squared, negative 2 in parentheses squared, um, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2, all over 2 times a, which is 1. All right, so let's simplify this. Negative negative 2 would just be 2 
plus or minus. All right, again, we're going to do these two things separately. We're going to do this and do this. Always make sure you do those two things separately. So if I do negative 2 squared, that would become positive 4. And then negative 4 times 1 times 2 would be negative 8 all over 2. All right, so then if I combine my terms under my radical, I have 2 plus or minus. That would be a negative 4 over 2. And what is the square root of negative 4? It would be 2i. Once again, as long as the denominator can go into both terms in the numerator, I can reduce it. So if I divide everything by 2, I get 1 plus or minus 1i, which is just i, and then it's over 1, so I don't need to write. If it's a 1 in the denominator, I don't need to write it. All right, we're going to look at one more. This is a quadratic equation because it has an x squared as its highest power, and it is not in standard form. To be in standard form, it needs everything needs to be on one side, in descending order. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides and that gives me 4x squared minus 1 equals 0. Okay, what is my a? Well, a is whatever's in front of x squared, so my a is 4. What is b? Well, b is whatever's in front of x and we don't have an x, so b would be 0. And then c is my constant, which is negative 1. Now, we can solve a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula um, as long as we have an a. So there can be times when our b is 0. There could be times when our c is 0. The only thing that can't be 0 is a. All right, so let's plug this information into the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right, so a negative 0, that's just 0, and if I add or subtract 0 from anything, it doesn't change anything, so we can just kind of uh, discard that. All right, then I have plus or minus. The square root of 0 is 0. And again, remember we do this, and then we multiply all of this together. Okay, so if I multiply all of that second half together, negative 4 times 4 times negative 1, negative and negative, that's a positive, and that would be 16. All over 2 times 4, which is 8. All right, so I have plus or minus. 0 plus 16 is just 16 over 8. And the square root of 16 is 4. So that's plus or minus 4 over 8. And, of course, that will reduce. So my solutions are plus and minus 1 half. Um, I didn't mention the discriminants in the last two problems. So um, those... Here, my discriminant would be 16. Well, as soon as you get it down to a single number under the radical, that's your discriminant. Since it's positive, that told me I would have two real solutions, and I do. I have a positive one-half and a negative one-half. In the previous uh, example, my discriminant is what? It's negative 4. All right, and since that is a negative, then that tells me I have two imaginary solutions, which I do. I have one plus i and one minus i. Those are my two imaginary solutions. And then remember, if it were zero, I would only have one solution. Say, for example, if uh, instead of my uh, discriminant here being negative four, if it were zero, well, zero, that would just make all of that go away. So my, my solution would just be one. Two divided by two is one. So that's what it looks like if I have zero for my discriminant. But um, that's how we can tell by looking at the discriminant, the number and types of solutions we would have. And that's how we solve quadratic equations.